Hunter Biden indicted for nine counts of tax-related crimes. Equal justice under the law? Let's discuss. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, state attorney for Palm Beach County, a.k.a. the Florida lawman. It's no surprise that Hunter Biden was indicted on these crimes. After all, when the government's deal with Hunter Biden fell through for the tax-related crimes and the purchase of a gun while he was addicted to drugs, then it was inevitable that federal prosecutors would charge Hunter Biden for both of those crimes. Now, you saw it already in Delaware, where Hunter Biden has already been indicted for the gun charges. And that one is interesting because those charges are rarely filed. Very few people get charged with what Hunter Biden was charged with in Delaware for purchasing a gun while addicted to drugs. In fact, that statute could be uh, thrown out as unconstitutional. See, what happened was when the deal fell through with Hunter Biden, then Merrick Garland, the attorney general, elevated David Weiss from a holdover from the Trump administration who would be allowed to file charges against Hunter Biden in Delaware because he was the former, Weiss was the former U.S. attorney in Delaware, to a special counsel that had the ability to file charges anywhere in the country. And so he did. He found a grand jury in California and was able to get a nine count indictment against Hunter Biden. And this is a serious case because you're talking about three felonies with the potential of putting Hunter Biden in federal prison for up to 17 years. But in reality, because Hunter Biden has no prior criminal record, he's not gonna get anywhere near the 17 years if he is found guilty. But it's still serious when you're dealing with felonies. And when you're dealing with tax related crimes, it's rarely charged when someone has paid back the taxes, unpaid taxes, it's rarely brought for the amount that Hunter Biden is dealing with, about 1.4 million. It's not charged very often when someone like Hunter Biden repaid the taxes plus interest, which Hunter Biden did in 2021. In addition, this charge here, these charges against Hunter Biden can be an uphill battle for prosecutors because you've got to prove willfulness. You've got to prove that Hunter Biden acted intentionally to avoid paying, paying taxes. And Hunter Biden, during the years in question, was in the throes of drug addiction. It's well documented, even in his own book. And so that's a challenge for prosecutors. Prosecutors seem to try to preempt that defense by Hunter Biden because in the indictment, they take great pains to explain how Hunter Biden was a party boy and lived an extravagant lifestyle instead of paying his taxes. They use that word extravagant a lot in the indictment. Here's one example on page 11 of the indictment. The prosecutors say that the defendant spent millions of dollars on an extravagant lifestyle at the same time he chose not to pay his taxes. The defendant spent approximately $1 million in 2016, $1.4 million in 2017, $1.8 million in 2018, and $600,000 in 2019. From January uh, through October 15, 2020, the defendant received more than $1.2 million in financial support that was used to pay various personal expenses, but not any of his federal income tax liabilities for 2016 to 2019. Between 2016 and October 15, 2020, the defendant spent this money on drugs, escorts, and girlfriends, luxury hotels and rental properties, exotic cars, clothing, and other items of a personal nature. In short, in short everything but his taxes. So there you have it. The government is going after him by saying this is not just some someone with substance use disorder down on his luck who forgot to pay his taxes. This is a guy who's living the high life, who's partying while the rest of us were working, paying our taxes. And that's the kind of message that could sell in front of a jury and in the court of public opinion. Look, one thing about us is that we believe in the rule of law and equal justice under the law and are very pro-democracy. That's why we're here. And we will call it out if someone is breaking the law. And it looks like, yeah, that Hunter Biden violated the law. But then the question is, do other people in his situation get treated the same way? Hunter Biden's defense is going to be, number one, he was in the throes of addiction, so 
his conduct in avoiding taxes was not willful or malicious. And number two, he repaid the unpaid taxes. He made the government whole. Now, that is not a pure defense to these tax-related crimes. But juries and judges will often feel sympathetic towards a defendant who has made amends. And Hunter Biden here has made amends financially. So you've got these challenges for prosecutors. And that's why I'm a little surprised that they decided to move ahead with these charges. I know that it was inevitable after the deal fell through, but these are nine counts, three felonies, up to 17 years in prison for someone who's repaid the taxes, someone who was in the throes of addiction, and someone who could claim that he is being unfairly targeted. Not that Merrick Garland hates Hunter Biden or is trying to you know, hurt President Biden, but the lawyers for Hunter Biden could argue selective prosecution that the only reason why Hunter Biden is facing these charges is because his last name is Biden. If his name was Hunter Smith, they could argue that these charges would never have been brought because Merrick Garland is very sensitive about being called political. We've seen this time and time again. And so the argument would be that the attorney general is overcompensating, that he wants to prove that he's giving no one special favors. That's why he kept on David Weiss, a Trump holdover, who was a U.S. attorney in Delaware, to investigate the president's son. That's why after the deal fell through, he elevated David Weiss to special counsel where he could prosecute this case anywhere in the country. And so that is an argument that could resonate with the jury. So this case is no slam dunk by any means for prosecutors. Another thing that this prosecution shows is that the whole argument that the Department of Justice has been weaponized by the Biden administration to go after Donald Trump and the MAGA movement is a complete farce. I mean, okay. As I said, you've got an attorney general who is apolitical, who doesn't want to ever be labeled as political. And so if anything, he is overcompensating here. That's a, a possibility. But at the very least, this is not a weaponized DOJ against Donald Trump. Can you imagine if the attorney general under Donald Trump tried to investigate and prosecute Trump's kids? That attorney general would be fired yesterday and perhaps sent to Gitmo. There is no way that Trump would ever allow this. And so you have here President Biden watching as his attorney general has now indicted through the Department of Justice his son, his own son. And there's not even a discussion that President Biden would intervene. There's not even a discussion that he would use his pardon powers, which are broad. He could pardon Hunter Biden today and set him free, but he won't because he believes in the rule of law. Now, he compare that to the former president's Department of Justice under Bill Barr, who's on his reclamation tour out there. But don't forget that under Bill Barr, they gave special treatment to some of Trump's allies, like Roger Stone, when he was being prosecuted, uh, like Michael Flynn, when he was being prosecuted, Paul Manafort, was let out on a compassionate release during COVID to home arrest, home confinement, when Michael Cohen, an enemy of Donald Trump, was sent back into prison because he was writing a book about Donald Trump. So when you say that there's a weaponization of the Department of Justice under Joe Biden against Trump, that's projection and it's just patently false. And as for the claim by Hunter Biden's lawyers that if Hunter Biden's name was Hunter Smith, this case would never have been brought. Well, it is rare for prosecutors to bring cases in situations like this. I mean, look at Roger Stone, Trump's close ally, who was sued by the federal government in 2021. The Department of Justice filed a civil lawsuit for unpaid taxes to the tune of $2 million. Did they prosecute him for it? Nope. No criminal charges were filed. In fact, a year later, the government reached a settlement with Roger Stone where he paid back the money plus interest and, and fines, but no criminal prosecution. Another example, how about Rudy Giuliani? Rudy Giuliani, it was recently discovered, 
owes the IRS $500,000 in unpaid taxes. In fact, the IRS imposed a lien on his Palm Beach property, and yet there's no sign of any criminal prosecution. Now, this isn't to get involved with the whole whataboutism thing, but this is called precedent. <laughs> this is what we do in the law, is we look at other cases, and we say, all right, what's the precedent here? And there's just not a lot of precedent for filing such serious charges against someone like a Hunter Biden who owes around $1.4 million and has paid it back and was in the throes of addiction during the period in question. So as this case moves ahead, we'll see if it gets traction and goes to trial around the time that President Biden and Donald Trump are expected to face off. Trump will have his own criminal trials at the time or whether the courts will have some sort of issue with this case. I suspect it probably goes to trial. And the judge in this case is a Trump appointed federal judge. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching this episode of The Florida Lawman. I'm Dave Ehrenberg. If you like the video, please like it. And I'll see you next time.